Hello. Hi. Today we've been asked to bring you the recent reignition of the burning debate around black holes. This is the so-called firewall question. It's not about protective firewalls, but about a wall of burning dangerous high energy particles around the inner sanctum of the black hole itself. But why do black holes matter? After all, they're not just merely theoretical objects. We know they exist out there in space, and so a good account of physics should be able to explain their properties. Let's get started. Black holes are regions of space where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, not even light. That's why they're called black holes. Now, as an experimental physicist, naturally, my first instinct is to go up to a black hole and observe the light not coming out. Or, more usefully, Tom could throw himself into a black hole to find out what lurks inside. But once he had passed the entrance to the black hole, the event horizon, he'd never be able to return. On top of that, the tidal forces would rip into shreds. But worst of all, once I was in the black hole, I wouldn't be able to send out a message and tell you about all the crazy signs going on inside. Or anyway, that's the story you'd read in your standard Beginner's Guide to Black Holes textbook. But the latest thinking instead subjects Tom to a barrage of highly energetic particles. This is known as the firewall. And to get to grips with that, we first need to open our textbook at the chapter on Hawking radiation. In 1974, Stephen Hawking calculated that a very slow trickle of particles will escape from a black hole. According to quantum mechanics, pairs of subatomic particles continually pop into existence at the black hole's event horizon. If one of those particles succumbs to gravity and falls in, but the other one manages to escape, it looks to anyone outside as though a particle has emerged from the black hole. Right, now if you look at Hawking's actual calculations, you find that the energy of the particle that Tom sees coming out of the black hole depends crucially on how he's moving and where he is. So, for example, if he's just outside the black hole, just outside the event horizon, he'll see particles with incredibly high energies, dangerous things, because these are, after all, the particles that have to zip away from the black hole and make it all the way out to large distances. Ah, and there's your firewall. There's these highly energetic particles that are zipping off. Uh, yes uh, and, and no. Um, there's a complication um, because in these extreme limits of physics that we're talking about, one person's seething mass of dangerous particles is another person's completely empty vacuum. Now, in the calculations we've just been talking about, uh, Tom was imagined to be near the black hole, but desperately trying to avoid being dragged into it, probably firing a rocket or something to try and get away, and then he sees all these high-energy particles. The very same calculation says that if Tom were just to relax and allow himself to fall into the black hole, he wouldn't see any of these particles at all. So from a health and safety perspective, it's better to just relax and fall in rather than trying to resist. Mm, yeah, it's all a bit confusing, but crucially, it's consistent with Einstein's theory of general relativity. Now, Einstein says that as Tom passes the event horizon, he can't see anything particularly special. The only significance of the event horizon is that once he's passed it, he could never later turn around and come back again. But there's nothing actually special about the space making up the event horizon itself. So as Tom passes through it, he just carries on towards, towards my inevitable death. But to make that happen, all of the energetic particles along Tom's path do have to hide themselves away. What the new calculations are saying is that it's not actually possible to make all the fine adjustments necessary to make these particles hide themselves away all the way in as Tom passes through the event horizon and into the black hole itself. So let me get this straight. If I was sat there at the event horizon of the black hole anyway and did something stupid like firing a giant rocket to try and escape, 
as you do, I would, in fact, see these highly energetic particles anyway, and they'd be incinerating me, and it would be my own stupid fault. Yep. Right. But Einstein says that if I just relaxed and fell in through the event horizon, I shouldn't see anything because physics says that there shouldn't be anything special about the event horizon at all. Yep. But now, some people are saying that actually there's no way of hiding away all of the highly energetic particles of the firewall, and so depending on who's right, I may or may not be exposed to a giant burning wall of fire. Right. So who's right? Well, I don't know. That's the uh, debate. So when you say there's a debate about firewalls, what you actually mean is that you don't know what's going on. Well, um, if you want to, uh, to, to, to put it like that... Uh... Right. You see, that's why I do experiments. If, for example, we'd actually made micro black holes at the Large Hadron Collider, they wouldn't have lasted very long, but we'd have been able to make measurements and say something definite about their properties. Now, that hasn't happened yet, and it might well be impossible. But the point is, we'll get to try again when we switch on the LHC again in 2015. Which gives you theorists plenty of time to properly sort this problem out once and for all. I'd start with reconciling quantum theory with general relativity, if I were you. Can't tell whether they're bros or totally hate each other. Sheldon Cooper on what, the left. What are you doing? I actually I was trying to work out how to subscribe, but Oh um, you wanna to subscribe to Head Squeeze? It's quite simple, just click yeah. here. There, but it's no, it's on the computer. No no no, here, yeah. Here Oh, you're on the screen. Yeah, how yeah, do you do yeah, yeah, no, how do you do that? Magic. Yeah. So I just Oh great, go on. Now your turn. <laughs>